What's happening everybody? Jim here from Clockwork Industries. Welcome back to another Rough Cut video. Today I'm going to go over a cool little project that I made up. A little laser cut acrylic TTS tool rack. That is something I probably should have made about three years ago when I first got the 770 in here. But when the machine got in here, I kind of had to hit the ground running and get it all set up for production as quick as possible, migrating everything over from the router that I was using over to this machine for doing all the cable management stuff and basically cranking out as many of these fixture plates as possible, designing the original system that I built for this, my custom fixture system, and doing all that stuff. So I never got around to it. So I finally, you know, the other thing too is I've had my little tool rack on the toolbox that was right behind the machine. So I never had a need to really make one of these because I could just reach right here, grab the tool and put it in. So that's what that acted as my rack for the first couple years in the machine but once I re rearranged the shop it was getting to be annoying going over there and grabbing a tool every time so what I do is this holds six tools um, if I can set it up I'll try to put the file in here but this is super easy to draw up in Fusion 360 uh, right here I'll post up like a little picture in picture of the Amazon clip and then I'll put a link down in the description of the one that I got uh, it's basically these magnets here they have a rubber coating so they don't slip and then it has a uh, M6 threaded stud on there. So I basically cut these square blocks on the Tormach 1100, which right now is all set up for acrylic. And you can see there's obviously, it's been snowing in this machine. And I like to cut my acrylic dry. So I've had that machine set up for acrylic this whole time. And also I've got all this scrap acrylic, all three boxes there are full of acrylic cutoffs. And I still have a stack down here of all this acrylic. So I've been meaning to try to figure out something to do with all this spare uh, acrylic that I have. I, I'm going to probably start up a second Etsy shop. I already kind of got that kind of stuff set up. I already went through all the stuff to do that. And I think I might just start making random odds and ends out of all the spare acrylic. There's so many things you can make with these machines with all this scrap and I want to take advantage of it. It's just that I like to cut acrylic dry. I don't like using flood coolant because double sided tape is one of the best hold downs unless you have a vacuum system, obviously, which I'd like to get that in the future. but. For now, the double-sided tape works really well. I can set up super quick. It's a relatively cost-effective method. So I, it's you can use flood coolant with it, but it's really not ideal. I mean, over time, eventually the part's gonna pop off and I'd rather not deal with that. And acrylic cuts great uh, dry. You just gotta have the right speeds and feeds. And uh, the distros that I made had beautiful surface finishes on it. Uh, you could even wipe it down with some like uh, headlight, clean, headlight acrylic polish or, or any kind of, any kind of uh, compound like that and it makes it look beautiful like crystal clear so um yeah so even with that machine cutting dry it still came out very well but uh yeah so i took took the extra scrap that i had these magnets are only i think it's a four pack for 14 bucks so you can make two of these for 14 bucks plus the acrylic scrap which is maybe a couple dollars worth of acrylic here um and yeah it took about 20 minutes to draw it all up cut the parts and have a ready to go tormach tts tool rack and it's relatively stable. I mean, I could put the Heimer up here. I mean, it doesn't slide at all. It might bow in the middle, but it's not gonna crack. Uh, like it's quarter inch acrylic. If you really want it to be beefy, beefier, step it up to like three eighths acrylic for like the, the plate. I might do that for the second one that I do. I just happened to grab that as the first piece of stock that I had. But I mean, as you can see, it holds six parts. It's still pretty solid and rigid. I mean, if you slammed into it, you might knock it off, but you'd probably do that anyway. It's not. It's not anything to do with like the structural rigidity of it. It would just be knocking the magnets off. But yeah, overall it's really solid. And I mean, this is kind of in the way too, so I'm really never gonna bump into it. But it, what it, what's really nice is I can set up like right now in here, I'll just show you, I'm working on a, I, I had to set this machine up to be able to do GPU support brackets when uh, the 770 is, or the 1100 is doing uh, custom orders and stuff. So I like to, uh, if I set this up for acrylic, I'd like to do as much projects with it as possible before I switch it back over. And I'd like to have production stuff being able to be done on both machines. So when one is doing something else, I can have this machine picking up the slack. Or when I really need to crank out some production work, I can have both of them going at the same time. But uh, you could basically set up like this. The GPU support's really nice to have the tool changer, obviously, because I have a lot of short tool paths that switch tools in between. So it's like one minute switch tools. 30 seconds switch tools, two and a half minutes switch tools. 
that's kind of a pain when you got to do it by hand, you know, because then you basically have to stand in front of the machine the whole time. My production stuff, I hit the button and I come back in 30 minutes, so it's not too bad to have to switch the tool out. But basically, I just load this up with the tools that I need for the job, and then it's all right there, and I don't have to like go looking around for it. It's all kind of set up and ready to go. And then if you really wanted to break it down in a more lean fashion, you could 3D print some tool tags, which I'm probably going to do eventually once I get a new 3D printer. And basically, I could just have it all set up, ready to go right here, and I could just grab it and go. So. I figured I'd share that with you guys. I'm really uh, going to try to push to get more content out. Uh, I started another YouTube channel and put the link down below. Uh, <clears throat> it's going to basically be clips from the from the gaming that I'm going to be doing on Twitch. So I got my Twitch channel going. Uh, I was pushing it for a while and then I kind of took a break to catch up with work. I had the custom orders come in and stuff like that. But I'm really going to start pushing the Twitch stream a lot more. As I mentioned in previous videos, like gaming and stuff is why I got into all this in the first place. So I'm doing myself a pretty... I'm kind of doing myself a disservice if I'm not doing the fun thing that got me into all of this and I uh, so I really want to start getting to getting into that a lot more and I'm gonna take clips from that and put it on the new YouTube channel I've actually been playing a ton of uh, Diablo Immortal lately so I'm probably gonna be streaming that there's a lot of controversy surrounding that game with the PC gamers versus mobile gamers and to me though it's it's the best mobile game I've ever played Diablo was the first RPG kind of game that I played which really got me into computer gaming so uh, there's a lot of things I'd like to see change in the future, but uh, I'm having a ton of fun playing it. I got a bunch of buddies that were all in the same clan, so we're doing a lot of the end game stuff in there, and it's just a lot of fun. And the cool thing is, like, when I'm super, it, it's a game for me that works better because a World of Warcraft takes a ton of time investment to really get out of the game what I would like to get out of the game. So I'll probably mess around in World of Warcraft for fun or something like that, but. Uh, Diablo Immortal with the group of buddies that I have playing it. I think that's kind of going to be the focus for now. And what we're planning on doing is rolling Diablo Immortal into Diablo 4 when that comes out in about a year, I'm thinking. They made the announcement recently with, uh, I think Blizzard said early 2023 is when they're planning the Diablo 4 drop. So really excited for that. So I'm going to be putting a ton of Diablo 4 content up on the other channel and uh, we're going to be streaming that on Twitch. I'm also going to be streaming uh, some shop stuff on the YouTube channel as well, so be on the lookout for that. And I'm also gonna push myself to do more content. Every t you know, I kinda get in a good groove and I'll get a couple videos out a week and then I I'll get sidetracked and get caught up in stuff and I won't put a video out for like two months. So I really wanna remedy that and try to start forcing myself to get at least a few videos out a week there's a lot of stuff where like I, I think overthink it in my head and I want to like edit it a certain way or do this and do that but really there's a ton of other cool like little things in the shop whether it's like some kind of shop trick uh, tip or trick that I figured out on the 1100 that helped me that I want to sh share with you guys or whether it's just like a cool project I'm working on like those distro plates and like that was the first custom order I've taken in quite a while so I kind of just wanted to focus in and get back in the groove of doing that before I started making videos for it. Uh, so the next one that comes in, I have a couple people who are working on getting their designs ready for a distro plate, so I'll probably do some videos for that. Um, I'm going to be making up a clear reservoir and a manifold for a project that I'm going to be working on, so I'm going to make some videos for that as well. And uh, I'm going to try to focus on content right now that doesn't need to be edited as much, where I could knock out the editing in 20 minutes. I I'd really prefer if I can get a video done in like a 30 minutes time from filming it, editing it, and posting it. And I'll work from there on making them a little more in-depth and complex as time goes on. But I really want to focus on just getting the videos out and sharing with you guys all the stuff that I've been writing. I've been making lists of video ideas and stuff for so long, and then they just never end up happening. So that's one thing I'm going to really be focusing on going forward. Also down below is going to be a link to the Discord. We got a bunch of different people in there sharing all kinds of stuff. We got computer modding projects. We got some of my buddies just from you know the Insta Machinist group on uh, Instagram who just have Tormox and they're making all kinds of cool machining projects. Um, I'm also going to be focusing on gaming content as well in there. So basically it's just taking all my kind of hobbies and the things that I'm working on and putting them all into one place. So it'd be like computer modding, computer building, computer gaming, and then CNC machining as a whole. So that's what you can kind of expect in the discord we'd love to have you join in there share the projects you're working on share your mods share anything you've learned along the way we've had some good uh, troubleshooting going in to the uh, founders edition cables and figuring out what the best wiring is for those and all the different wiring sizes available what gauge you should be using uh, a bunch of cool projects in there and a lot of people sharing information so it's a it's, I, i'm really happy with what it's growing into so if you want to join up, it'll be a link will be down below. There's, it'll be a working link on like the ones in the past. I'll make sure it's one that lasts, you know, it's a permanent link so it won't expire in seven days. But I think that's going to be about it. So down below will be the new YouTube channel, the Twitch channel, the Discord. And those are kind of the things I'm going to be focusing on. I'm also hopefully 
going to be rolling out the backtrack combs and navigator combs. I'm aiming by the end of this summer. Uh, I shouldn't need new fixtures for the navigator combs. I think I have the designs ready. Those should be able to go right onto the fixtures I already have, but I do need to make about six to eight more fixtures for the backtrack combs. So that's kind of like the next product rollout will be that. Three millimeter rake combs are coming as well for everybody who has a little bit thinner cables who are using like 18 gauge cables with two millimeter sleeve or 16 gauge with two millimeter sleeve. These should work really great for that. Um, Cause there's a lot of people who have like cable sets that either come with their power supply that are sleeve now. Uh, some of the older like uh, cable mods cables I think have that. There's a couple other brands that have that on Amazon and stuff like that. There's a lot of people with these kind of cables that don't want to have to upgrade to uh, four millimeter uh, sleeving just to use aluminum cable management. So um, I've, I've heard a lot of people request that. So I'm gonna try to make that happen. And then some other products that are gonna be coming out is some aluminum anodized case feet. I have some designs I'm working up. I just need to get like everything worked into a production fixture for that. Uh, I'll probably roll a couple different designs out over time. I think I might roll out another graphics card support bracket design over time. Uh, I'm gonna do a video on the Atlas GPU support, kind of just showing a couple of the tool paths and then the final product and everything. I don't think I've made a video on that yet. Uh, I can't remember if I did or not. I know I did a phone video that I edited a couple videos back where I just saved the clips up on my phone, but that's, that's really not a great way to do it. I'm just gonna use my camera, throw it in Premiere Pro and uh, clip in whatever I need to and then get the video out, so. Uh, I think that's going to be about it. Uh, thank you guys who uh, have subscribed so far. If you haven't yet and you're interested in gaming, computer modding, machining, hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, hit the like button. Uh, if you have any suggestions for things around the shop you'd like to see a video of, if you have any questions about machining or anything like that, I'd be happy to help you out, make a video on it. We can talk about it, join the Discord, ask questions. It's a great place to do that. I'm trying to, uh, got a lot of people that come in asking questions and stuff. So yeah, I think that's going to be about it for this one. Thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Peace.